A seal the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We look at the protection of the girl child. And uh, we have a legal practitioner who joins the GAP conversation, Justice Uhuegbo, a human rights lawyer. Justice Uhuegbo, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. It is my pleasure. All right. Uh, let's take a quick look at you know what transpired uh, yesterday, more like reporting. The Lagos State House of Assembly has passed a motion seeking better protection of female children. The House, which earlier passed laws in favor of gender, hailed the state government for doing its best to safeguard the girl child. And of course, uh, uh, the speaker presided over a session in commemoration of the 2022 International Girl Child Day. Obase, as he's known, said the International Day provides an opportunity to talk about the challenges, including uh, violation of minors, trafficking, drug abuse, and cultism. It is he also said it's also an opportunity to scrutinize the performance of government agencies saddled with the responsibility of protecting the girl child. He added, now the motion was moved by Honorable Mujisola Ali Macaulay, who said that the theme for this year's celebration, our time is now and our rights and our future, seeks recognition of girl power, inclusiveness, and political participation. And so the House Committee Chairman on Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation noted that girls worldwide have shown interest in politics, arts, education, poverty-related issues. Uh, Justice, uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. But, but I'd like you to share your thoughts on this development. Uh, do, do you, don't you think that this is just a duplication of uh, processes, or especially when we have the child rights law in Lagos that encapsulates you know, all of this consent about the girl child? Well, uh, I don't see it that way. Rather, I see it as an advancement to the law. Um, one of our legal jurists, Professor Rousseau, said that the law is to harmonize with the society. The implication of that is that the law grows alongside with the society. As the society grows, the law grows alongside with the society. So I will have to use this opportunity to thank the legal state uh, House of Assembly for doing a good job. And uh, no wonder Lagos is called the center of excellence. Yes, there is child rights law existing, actually. But the issue we should be asking ourselves is, to what extent has that law been enforced in our society today, especially as it affects the girl child? Many people, millions of Nigerians outside there still abuse the rights of children in this country, especially the girl child. We see it every day, both on social media and everywhere. And there's little or nothing that most government agencies are doing about it. The government on its own has tried to an extent by setting up some agencies like the NAP team and all the rest. But the issue is there, to what extent is this law being obeyed? The, the, the awareness, the orientation that, the, that adults, parents, guardians need about the child law law, is it actually advancing, especially the girl child in our society? If you go outside there and see the sufferings of the girl child in this country, you will, you will wait for our country. So I am totally in support and I applaud and thank the legal state House of Assembly or government for coming up with such an advancement as it regards the girl child. No, I saw what... State. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, that's fantastic what you have said, but it's also good that you pointed out the issue of enforcement. And so if we have the girl child, I mean, the child right act law, uh, which has been, of course, Lagos State has domesticated, and that's why it's a law now. Uh, the, the consents are not different. So you, if you have a child, a child is a child, whether or not it's a boy or is a girl. Uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with, you know, protecting the girl child, but we're saying that the issues are not different from, you know, the issues that the girl child, have, the girl child is faced with. So the issue of child marriage, prohibition of child marriage, child betrayal, exposure of child to the use of, you know, substances that are very toxic, uh, the use of children in other criminal activities, sexual intercourse with a child, other forms of sexual abuses and what have you. Don't you think that it would have been important to ensure that, uh, you know, that 
the lawmakers should pay attention to the issue of enforcement, ensuring that government agencies, everyone, there's a level of awareness, rather than saying, oh, we're at this point of moving another proposition or proposal, uh, where we say, oh, we need to pay attention. Because the issues uh, with the girl child and the children in Nigeria are not almost different. They're one and the same thing. And like you have rightly stated, the level of enforcement is questionable. So what's the guarantee that if this becomes a law or if it's, you know, it, it's deliberated and it's been considered, that implementation will be a thing? No, just, just like I, I, I said earlier, um, I see it as an advancement and an improvement to the existing law. And you see, we, are, we have a peculiarity in Nigeria whereby when laws are there, many people for a long time, when they are not hearing anything about that law, they think that the law has become absolute or is no longer in existence. So, but it, it, it is done on the agencies or the the, 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 the the House of Assembly, the lawmakers to always keep on coming up with laws, advancement in that particular direction. For example, I agree with you that, yes, it is about the, the, the child rights law. But the truth is this. When you talk about abuse of the child in our society, who are the vulnerable? It is the ladies. It is the girl child. It's just like this issue of domestic violence in Nigeria. Domestic violence has been domesticated in, in several states in Nigeria. But to what extent has it been enforced? Today, we have one kind of orientation in this country that people do not see certain things as it, as it, it, it is supposed to be natural. Some people will tell you we are in Africa, we are in Nigeria, we, we are not here to practice Western law or something like that. And that is one of the problems we have. So I, the, the most important thing is this. Once there is advancement of these laws, remember that once there is an advancement of the law, the penalty also will change. If, for example, the penalty for 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 gay child slavery or gay child uh, uh, compulsory sex or all the rest is let's say uh, ten years, once there is an advancement to that particular section of the law, the definitely definite, the punishment section would, would change. So these are some of the, the the advantages of you know making an advancement to 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 every law. As far as I'm concerned, in fact, let me tell you the two issue is it's called review. As far as I'm concerned, such laws are supposed to be reviewed every every year. All right. Uh, uh, Justice Uhuebo, um we, we can't talk about uh, you know the rights of a girl child as you know we all mark international day of a girl child and it gives us a chance to remember uh, uh, that we have we have some issues to to uh, fix as far as, you know, respecting the rights of the girl child and indeed the rights of children are concerned, which you've rightly said. But um, the, the rights of, of the girl child, the plight of the girl child, the fate of the girl child in our society, like you said, it is in, in a, a very, very, very uh, bad situation. The rights are being trampled upon. But it's, it's connected to the issue of gender equality, uh, gender rights which, which uh, seems that the Nigerian society is not really uh, receptive to. Um, if you remember, the gender bill has tried to uh, proceed or progress from the legislative stage to presidential assent, and it's been struck down each time it's been brought up, even despite uh, you know, protests by the women and all that. Um, what can you say about lack of rights for the girl child in the larger context of the lack of rights for women in Nigeria and the, the apparent lack of um, receptance or acceptance of gender equality as a concept and a way of life in Nigeria? Well, you see, um, truly speaking, I, the issue of gender equality uh, came, the campaign started more because of the kind of orientation we have in this country, in, in Africa generally, and especially in Nigeria. Some other African countries have left Nigeria behind you know, in, in that. So I have to tell you that, you see, today there are so many people, especially in, Afri in the Nigerian context, that do not believe that a woman should have a say when it comes to issues, and they still have that orientation and treat women as if they are nothing in our society. They forgot in each other night, the constitution, the 1990 constitution, simplicity, provides that 
you can never deny any person of anything, irrespective of being his or her his or her gender. So that is even even equality we are talking about, and that is even the gender sensitivity we are talking about. Then how many people are adhering to this law? The, I, I have to tell you the truth. Even the elites amongst us in the society are also guilty of this. Come to come to various families. Many they don't regard women as anything. But most of these people, they travel outside the country. They see what is happening there. But when they come here, they tell you, no, that is the Western world that we are in Nigeria. So for me, the women, we should keep on pushing. Women cannot only do it alone. And let us also remember that every person today in the world, in Nigeria, came to a woman. So we are even supposed to accord them more respect than even men. For me, that's my personal opinion. They are supposed to be treated whom they are by implication. But unfortunately here, we are not doing it that way. In politics, I thank God that women are coming up in politics today. But people still campaign against them. How can a woman come to, to, to rule us? How can a woman come to govern us? But look at some countries that women have governed. Look at how well they are doing and all the rest, or how well they were done in the past. So as far as I'm concerned, the rights of a girl child should, in fact, should be a continual advancement on a, on on yearly basis, so that the sensitization can go around. So that if there are so many people that, well, that well, even if you kill them today, they will tell you they can never respect a woman. But they forgot that they came through a woman. So our orientation at times it works baffles me. And moreover, like you said. Even the Constitution, the fundamental human rights, this, this section, the chapter 4 of the 19th Constitution as amended that talks about fundamental human rights, is always talking about any person, any person. It did not even say a man or a woman. So by implication, why should we not try to discriminate between a man and a woman? Okay. But, but let's talk about, you know, the consents of uh, the House. Uh, we're talking about the House Committee, Chairman on Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, uh, saying that, you know, the consents of a girl child worldwide includes, you know, their interests. They have indicated interests in politics, uh, arts and education and what have you. Uh, do, don't you think that we're already jumping, I mean, putting the cart before the horse, especially where, uh, you know, the basic needs of, children, I would say children, and also the girl child to be specific, has not been met, that we begin to, you know, talk about all this. We're talking about just the basic issues, having access, you know, to education, quality life, and what have you. Uh, don't you think that, you know, it feels like we're moving too fast? No, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way, because um, uh, we say that without laws, human beings are the worst animal. So, and that is why laws should always come up every time. Uh, I don't know whether you are aware that there are some, some people in this country that believe that a woman should not even go to school, even at this just age we are today, that believe that a woman, okay, for example, there are so many places in Nigeria, so many regions in Nigeria that still believe and practice this doctrine of uh, women can never inherit a property and all the way. It, it is an issue everywhere. So it becomes the issue of every time, woman, woman, woman. Then you forgot the issue that every person, the law provides equality before the law, and that is part of the rule of law. So if there is equality before the law, why should it come when it comes to politics, when it comes to sharing of properties, when it comes to gangs, you now want to sideline the woman? Is this what the Constitution stipulates? If the Constitution is actually our current norm, why are we trying to practice that? Even the elites, some of even the lawmakers are even guilty of this when it comes to them. I know what I'm saying. I've had this, I've done so many cases on that. So as far as I'm concerned, it is not even supposed to be a state law. That's why I'm happy with the Lagos State Government. It's supposed to be a national legislation. Uh, somebody tried to push for gender equality last time at the National Assembly. But you saw, you saw how he felt. You saw how. Oh, but how but, but, but men um, justice, justice. I think that let's you know let's stay within the 
ambience of the conversation. I mean, let's say within the purview of this conversation. Uh, so we don't, I understand that women's rights need to be understood, but we're talking about children here. We're talking about the female child. And so according to the constitution, a child is a child, uh, the age would be from, you know, zero up until 18. That's what we're talking about. So the concerns are, have we been able to meet the basic needs of our children, especially, especially you know, the female child, since we're talking about the rights, you know, of uh, the female Right, and so we're saying, as as a country and as a state, have we been able to meet the basic needs? Whether the Constitution already enshrines that, the Constitution talks about it uh, by the virtue of the fact that they are humans, they are entitled to all of this, and also looking at for some of the state that has domesticated, you know, uh, the act, and then it has become a law, especially Lagos State. Uh, they're just basic needs, right? To life, quality life, education, and whatever. So, have we been able to meet the basic needs of this, you know? The girl child. That well, well, you ask, you, answering your question, you ask this question, but you also are uh, part of the society. Uh, you and I know that the answer to this question is capital no. When you go outside here now, you see so many children hawking on the street. Is it supposed to be so? What is their right of education? education? What is their right of housing and all that? There are so many children outside there that are homeless and all the rest. And by, by, by virtue of the rights child law, it's every child is entitled for a roof under his head. Today, what is happening today baffles me. When there is any problem, especially in divorce or massive or anything between a man and a woman, it is the children that suffer it. There are so many children today that even their, their, their parents, especially their father, doesn't care about them. And what Oh, it seems that uh, since uh, we have lost him, the network played a fast one on him. Mercy, these are very important issues. Very, very uh, I mean, I was just, uh, you know, having a communication with someone. You know, I was shocked to hear a conversation with uh, between my colleagues and listeners on radio in River State when I worked there, uh, River State, about inheritance, female inheritance. I'm glad the guests talked about it. Um, women in most parts of River State are not allowed to partake of their parents' wealth in terms of inheritance. And I was shocked to hear most of the male callers attack the presenters of that program um, over this issue of women should inherit their parents. But it just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so it's glad to know this year in River State, River State governor passed uh, three bills and in effect ended, you know, this culture and practice of women not Taking of the appearance inheritance, mm. it just does not make sense. Very we, we have to go. Uh, very commendable, go. Yes. you know, of the government. But in all of this, uh, unfortunately, we lost connection with our guests. It would be important that we pay attention. I think that we always talk about the fact that we have too many laws in this country. We have lofty policies. Uh, imagine that we implement half of it. It would be a better place if we implement, you know, respect Absolutely. the child right act, as it were, uh, as has been domesticated in some of, you know, the states in Nigeria. Then we won't be talking about the consent of a girl child. Now we're paying emphasis on the girl child because we're not doing the needful, but that's the much we can take at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Please follow us on social media. We're across all the platforms you know. Uh, Plus TV Africa, just type that in the search box and hit the follow button. Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. And Good I morning. am Messi. Have a fantastic day.